Hello, Facebook. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Marcus here. It is, um, I don't even know what date it is. It's almost end of June. Uh, it is Tuesday, though. It is Tuesday. It's about 6.30 a.m. I'm at the bar here. I'm getting a little work done, and I've got to get out and... Uh, uh, I gotta get out and do breakfast, and then I gotta come back and take some coaching calls on uh, some of our clients. But I've not done a Facebook Live in a while, and I apologize. Uh, summer's here, and we are just super, super, super busy running around. So, good morning to everybody tuning in. Good morning. I'll give you a couple more minutes, but I'm gonna talk about Mezcal today. I'm gonna do a brief rundown on Mezcal and some basic things you should understand about Mezcal. Mezcal is super popular. Oh, by the way, all tequila is considered mezcal. Um, all tequila is considered mezcal, but all tequila is... It's like the whiskey bourbon thing. Um, all tequila is considered mezcal, but all mezcals are not considered tequila. So, um, so I'm going to talk about tequila really quick and uh, some key terminology to understand on tequilas. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Billy. Good morning, everybody who's tuning in. And again, I've not been on in a while, and I apologize. Hi, Spencer. Um, of course, Jamie's on, so um, I remember I'm doing a lot of things. So, first of all, mezcal. Mezcal is a spirit that's made from agave, uh, usually espadine. Uh, there are some other varietals of, of agave that go into, into um, mezcal. Mezcal is a spirit made in Oaxaca. In Oaxaca, so very southern Mexico. Um, so, tequila is typically made, well, tequila can only be made in Jalisco. This is in Oaxaca, so two different regions, different extraction types um, or cooking types, very different cooking types, I should say. Um, so we're not going to talk about tequilas, but you know, um, people have been asking me more and more about tequilas, mezcals, and the Satoles, Bacanoras, and there's five distinct spirits of Mexico from, for all from the agave. So we're going to start doing some agave workshops and going through all these all these wonderful, wonderful Mexican spirits. So there's really a big world once you look past tequila, and it's really a fascinating world. So, all right, so Mezcal. Um, mezcal, let's see, there's another brand of Mezcal. So this Mezcal um, says on it, Pachuga. Uh, maybe this one does not say Pachuga, but it is Pachuga. Pachuga. So, um, and here's a bottle of Bacanora, which is another spirit from Mexico. Uh, and then we got a bottle of Ricea. Ricea, which is a, a spirit that's made in Jalisco, right? With tequila. This is made in the same state as tequila, uh, Ricea. So, one of the terminologies you need to know on Mezcal is the terminology Pechuga. P-E-C-H-U-G-A. Pechuga. So, you'll often see it on a bottle here and there. Pachuga is like their harvest release, their fall, fall harvest release. So all mezcals are, or actually Pachuga can happen through Satoles, through Bacanoras, a Bacanora can be Pachuga, and a Ricea can be Pachuga. So let's see if we can, yeah, so there we go, Pachuga. All right, see that right, right there, Pachuga? So Ricea, Pachuga, let's see. Right there, you're looking at Pachuga. All right, so, um, so what Pachuga means is, Pachuga means that it's their fall harvest release. Sometimes they're made year round, but traditionally Pachuga translates to breast, specifically chicken breast. So if you heard the word Pachuga in Mexican, you might think you're getting chicken breast um, to eat. However, the Pachuga version of this mezcal spirit, this is Ricea, is their harvest where they actually infuse, so they infuse nuts, seeds, um, fruit like lemon, citrus, and chicken breast. You can also do turkey, you can do iguana, you can do rabbit. Um, and I even saw a satol with venison infusion. So what they do is they hang the meat above the distillation where the vapors go through it. And I'm not sure of the 100% reason why, besides tradition, they're doing it, but something to, uh, so there's some scientific reason why, what happens to it, the product, quality of the product. So here's Ricea. Ricea being that fifth spirit from Mexico, uh, only only legal since 2009, but made for the last couple hundred years. So here's what I see. Here's the same producer, one in Pachuga, one in regular. So you say you have the clear and you have the frosted bottle. So regular, Pachuga. So this indeed does have turkey in it. All right. Now here's an interesting thing. Regular Peloton, Pachuga Peloton. 
This Petruga Peloton is actually vegan. So there is no animal products in here. They do it with all citrus. And it's really cool because you can have a very distinctive nose between the two and two totally different flavor profiles. I like to say, well, this is the vodka and then they make gin is sort of what I like to say because they infuse it with a bunch of different things. But this is basically a citrus pachuga, so there is no breast, so oxymoron, it's a vegan pachuga. So regular and pachuga. Now pachugas are typically done in limited releases. Um, there's not as much of them to go around and they are more expensive. Um, so this ricea here is a really awesome ricea. Ricea, ricea, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. I have to go there and find out, I guess. Um, this is, this isn't a bad price. This is a decent price. We do have a pachuga. I'm sorry, we do have a Rexia that is much more money. I mean, this costs us well over $100, uh, this Mozonte. And this is a really cool, cool project that's happening. So, just like wine, just like wine, the more information that's on a bottle of wine, the more specific they get, um, typically the more expensive it is. Same thing with these bottles. I mean, this one gets really descriptive of what's in here. It even gets descriptive down to the, down to the crush method. So, crushed with, um, Mazo de Madeira, Madeira, Mazo de Madeira, right there. So it even tells you how it's crushed. There's several different ways to crush, or a couple different ways to crush agave when it comes to making the agave spirits. So first the agave has to be cooked, unless you're using a diffuser, and it's shredded up in, in hot water and hydrochloric acid, which is not the way you want to drink your tequila or have your tequila made, um, but it's a tequila's dirty secret. Um, but you would take a generally a roller mill where you take this machine that after the agave is cooked, it's steamed or baked or whatever. In the Mex in the in the um, mezcal world, it's always roasted uh, in the ground in a pit, in a horno, in an oven, an underground earthen oven. So you would probably take it and take a tohono wheel because um, a tohono wheel is more traditional in Oaxaca. First of all, mezcal is one of those things that's much more primitive. Um, literally, there's a lot of mes mezcal places that are outside with, with an earthen pit um, making this, and they take the, the after the agave is cooked, they put it into a bin, and they take a mule and a tohono wheel, and they roll it around. Now, Patron does a tohono wheel, but there's electronic. Um, there's such a big, massive company that it's not an actual electronic tohono wheel. And tohono wheel is the best way to actually crush the agaves. However, this ricea, um, there's literally two guys with a wooden mallet, and that's what that means, a crush right there, uh, Mazo de Madeira. It's a wooden mallet. So they're sitting there literally with what looks like a baseball bat with a fatter end, and they're sitting there in the little like mortar and pestle bowl or something. The agave goes in there, and they're sitting there and pounding it by hand to extract it. It's not even going through a, a, a mule-pulled uh, uh, tohono wheel. It's actually getting pounded with what looks like a baseball bat, the blunt end of a baseball bat. And that's what go, that's what makes this. Um, this is really a treat, this rice. Yeah, this is like $15 an ounce on our on our menu. Um, really, really good. Very, very, very small producer. Um, and this is rice. Yeah, we had a couple, couple cool mezcals into it. We have a lot of mezcals now. We almost have as many mezcals as we have tequila, so it's really cool. Um, we got one the other day that they've been making six generations been making mezcal agave de cortez really really good stuff um we're gonna start doing flights of of um of uh of agave spirits so you can start tasting and going through uh here's the only bacanora that we have bacanor is bacanor is probably the hardest of the spirits well bacanor uh, rice is hard to get too so tolls are a bit easier mezcals are very easy and of course tequila is easy so good morning everybody tuning in Hi, Stephen. Thanks, Stephen. Um, morning, Christopher. Everybody else who's tuning in, thank you very much. I haven't been on in a while, so I figured I'd just get on really quick and before I have to go cook breakfast off-site. Um, hi, Chris. So, um, Bacanor is probably, Bacanor and Ricea is probably some of the hardest stuff to get. There's just not enough out there. And the reason why Ricea is so hard is because it was just legalized in 2009. Um, so... But here's a Bacanora, and the word Sylvester is on this one. Sylvester means wild. That's a translation of Sylvester. So Sylvester means wild. You see the word Pechuga. Pechuga means breast, poultry breast, chicken breast particularly. 
So the word pachuga there um, on this ricea. And this ricea, you, like, it's really cool when you taste the two side by side. You just taste this first, and you're like, yeah, this is good stuff, Marcus. And then everybody who tastes this is like, um, this is like really good. Like, like really got some cool stuff. And again, there's nuts, seeds. They can even do rice. I'm not sure if rice is in this one. Rice can even get infused into it. Um, lemons, herbs and spices. So it's like making a basket and infusing like you would like making like vodka to a gin. Um, so the botanicals that go in there is really cool. And these, uh, and of course, mezcal's made like that. So tolls are made like that. Um, Mezcal, Satoles, Bacanoras, and Ricea, so that's pretty cool. So stay tuned for our Agave 101s, our Agave workshops. Uh, we've done tequila tastings before uh, and, uh, with all these other spirits now that Mexico's famous for or becoming famous for. We decide we're just going to go. A lot of people are asking, so we're going to um, go forward with that. We do have a steamed. A lot of people don't like Mezcal because they say it's, it's uh, roasted and smoked which mezcal can be very smoky. Certain mezcals can be very smoky. Um, we actually have a steamed agave one, which is really cool, um, but it's out of stock right now. Uh, it's, they're waiting, the distributors waiting for it to come in back into the country. Uh, so they're having a problem getting into the country. And people are asking us, Marcus, let's take a trip to Oaxaca or Jalisco and see the tequila and mezcal. Jamie and I would love to do a trip to to Jalisco and, and uh, uh, Oaxaca. We would love to do a group trip down there. We have to go down there first and make sure that everything checks out. Uh, I hear it's very, very safe in Oaxaca uh, and Oaxaca is sort of like the food capital of Mexico, sort of like Lyon is to France. Uh, that's how, what they say um, Oaxaca is. So Jamie and I would love to go to Oaxaca and check it out and see what's going on down there. And they do a lot of great tours in the tequila world for, um, for um, in Jalisco, so we've seen that for years. We just have never personally been there, so Jamie and I just need to make a trip. We message other friends who are in the restaurant industry, and we're trying to figure out if we can go um, next year sometime. We want to go to Chile next year, too. Uh, we want to go uh, to Chile and check out the wineries down there as well. Um, so that's it for now, folks. Got to get going. Got to get out and do a breakfast off-site. I got to get back for my coaching calls with our clients, our students, our coaching students. Uh, which is fun on Tuesdays. I like working with other people and helping them grow their business. Um, so um, it's great to see clients after you work with them for a year or two, even after six months, to them to report back their financials. And you're like, wow. I mean, um, I mean, you've had clients that have gone from 1.5 million to two and a quarter million, um, one million to a million and a half, 600,000 to 900,000 or 600,000 to a million. So it's really cool to... To, to see to work with clients and have them have them increase all these massive numbers um, so it's really cool so Jamie and I really enjoy doing that I love helping other other restaurant business owners so um, this being one of the toughest industries obviously that's you know we can't get money from banks they don't give us money from banks to open up um, a lot of this money comes from private money um, a lot of people's life savings and they go into um, these restaurants with their own money and they end up failing and it's a shame and hate to see that and Jamie and I started with all of our own money and we quickly um, had no money when we first started very quickly had no money in the first couple of years 2003 2004 2005 2006 um, those were the very those were the very first years when we struggled and struggled until 2007 or 8 2008 was like when we kind of turned the corners so it took us a five five full years to turn the corner and most restaurateurs no restaurateurs won't wait five years to turn the corner they don't make money after two years they're like, um, close, shut down, um, you know, cut our losses down. It would have been very easy for me to go back and get a really good job because I came from a really good job. Uh, so that would have been easy to do. That would have been an easy way out. But we figured it out. Love what we do here, and we are very thankful for all of our guests that have, that have come in, that we've made friends with. It's really, really awesome. We had a lady come in last night, and she goes, you know, I, last time I was, I was with you was many years ago. And she goes, your beer cooler wasn't working. We were kind of turned off you know, from your beer cooler, and we just haven't been back. And this was like 2007 or eight. And, and every now and then, you know, you got a piece of equipment that goes on a glitch, a compressor blows, or uh, there's a leak in it, or it freezes up, and she goes, we just never come back. And she goes, and you do all this great marketing, and you sent me birthday offers for years, and and I just have never come back. And she came back last night for the first time with a birthday offer to celebrate her birthday. And she's like, oh my gosh, like I've been missing this this whole time. 
Um, I'll be back on a frequent basis now for my birthday and in between my birthdays I'll be back she goes this is amazing what you guys are doing here uh, she goes just never come back so it's really cool in situations like that because you never know how marketing quite works um, marketing has an amazing way um, when you get people's information and you um, and you communicate to them that's one of the things we really teach with our clients is about how to communicate with their guests and and building a database and seeing the exponential growth that way. So, all right, folks, that's it. Got to get going. Talk to everybody later.